Hello, my name is Dick Sturgeon. Uh, this is a focus on the community. This is a program which is uh, uh, put on by a nonprofit organization called Sulan uh, Commu Community Media and is, uh, and is uh, sponsored by Morningside College, which provides us with the facilities here. Today, we have a guest with us, Linda Scheid from uh, the Siouxland Food Bank, mm -hmm. and we welcome you here. Thank you. Uh, this is, uh, this is a, a great organization that uh, has uh, uh, done an awful lot of good in the Siouxland area. You follow some very uh, successful uh, uh, executive directors who have helped build this throughout the years, and, and you've done a, a bang-up job. We welcome Thank you here you. today. Thank you. Now, uh, your, your organization does uh, what? Uh, explain it to the people. We sort of feel like the food bank is a well-kept secret and that there aren't enough people who know that we're here and what we're all about. So it's always wonderful to have a chance to share with people why the food bank exists and how we operate. What we do is we are the central, stable collection point for food that needs to get out into the community to feed the hungry and the needy people. What we do is collect all of this food from various avenues and then we distribute it to over 200 agencies in a 14 county tri-state area. You don't give food out directly to right. people, but you provide right. it to the agencies who then do work with the, with the needy. Exactly, so if someone calls me and says, how do I go about getting food? Then I refer them to some of those agencies that we work with because those are the people that can give you the box, the bag, the whatever that you can take home and help feed your family. And where do you, where do you get the food from? Are there several sources? Oh, absolutely, it's a variety of things. Number one, our food bank is part of the America Second Harvest Network, which is a large nationwide coast-to-coast -coast organization that works with corporations, partners with them to collect donations and then distribute it across the network. We're connected through the food bank in Omaha, so we get trucks typically on a monthly basis from Omaha with the product that we have requested from them. So we have product through that network. We also get direct corporate donations, so there are corporations in our area that are really very good to us. So you can look at Wells Blue Bunny and you can look at uh, Sarah Lee Bakery and you can look at a number of organizations that help put food into the warehouse. We also are the beneficiary of a lot of food drives that are done locally by organizations and individuals. So recently, for example, you would have been aware that the Girl Scouts did Supermarket Saturday in February and the Boy Scouts did their annual um, scouting for food in April. And then in May was the Letter Carriers Food Drive and all of those organizations bring the food they collect to the food bank to benefit the agencies that we work with. We also purchase some products, so there are some retailers that we work with. Because we're able to buy in bulk, we can still sometimes get product for a better price than what an agency could go grocery shopping independently and get their items for. So it's a whole variety of things we do. We do participate in some commodity programs that are state-based programs, so we have some Iowa commodities, some Nebraska commodities as well. And you have quite a building down there. It's a, it's a big building. It was, and I understand it was donated to you. It to was the an awesome gift. Rosenthal Foods has the building, or had the building, on the corner of Floyd Boulevard and 11th Street. And they were changing their focus and became a food brokerage, and they only needed an office. So they no longer needed this large warehouse that they had used all those years. So they donated it to the Food Bank of Siouxland, which was perfect because the building that the Food Bank had been in down on Douglas Street was about to be torn down. So it worked out so well, and they donated us the building, and now they actually rent space in our building. And, of course, the rent from them and a couple of other tenants helps us make our monthly budget, and that's important, too. Now, you, you have a freezer, you have a cooler, so you can, get, you can have frozen, uh, right. frozen meat and vegetables, and you have a cooler that you can get things that would perish otherwise uh, to help along. Absolutely, and that's one of the misconceptions a lot of people have about food bank, is that it's strictly canned vegetables, canned fruits, little macaroni and cheese. We really do the gamut. We do all kinds of things, and as you mentioned, we're especially delighted to have all the frozen meat that we acquire. Um, and to have the cooler so we can even do some dairy products from time to time. It's made a big difference in the offerings that we can give to their, our agencies. Now, you, uh, you have a fundraiser coming up, I understand, as a, some type of golf tournament? We call it Will Golf for Food, and that allows the golfers to get out there and swing the clubs and have a really good time. 
and the cost of um, their team taking the course that day helps benefit the food bank and of course we have different corporations that will sponsor the holes along the way so it's a really nice fundraiser it's a lot of fun the golfers are treated to a very nice dinner afterwards in the clubhouse it's coming up on the 20th of June the golfing will actually happen at Whispering Creek golf course and all you have to do to get registered is to call me right at the food bank. And you have a, a website also. I understand. And it is on the website as well, that's right. And uh, Do you know that off? Sure do I, I have a hard time <laughs> reciting mine. but uh, It's easy. It's www.sulandfoodbank.org. That's simple enough. Yes. Uh, you also need uh, and use uh, uh, volunteers from time to time and also people here in the Siouxland area, you can make a church or an individual or a group can make it a, a, a cash donation directly to the food bank. Is that correct? Absolutely. We're very dependent upon volunteers to help us accomplish what we do. People are amazed when they understand that the Food Bank of Siouxland distributes over a million pounds of food every year. We do that with a full-time staff of three, one part-time employee, and a whole host of volunteers. So we could never move all that food and do all the work we do without a good core of volunteers. And that's up from 32,000 from uh, Isn't that when, an amazing when history? the organization was down, on, uh, was down on Douglas. The growth has just been phenomenal. You have a program which I understand when school gets out is going, is going to uh, be uh, put on the back shelf for a little while, but next fall it, it will come back out. That's right. And it's called Backpack program. Mm -hmm. Would you like to explain what that is? I would love to. We're so excited about this program. We didn't create this program. It's actually happening uh, in food banks across the country. It started in the south where a teacher said, you know what, these kids are coming to school on Monday morning and they're hungry. They rely on the free and reduced lunch program, the breakfast program Monday through Friday, but in their homes they might not have a whole lot to sustain them through the weekend. What can we do to take care of these children through the weekend? So it started there. And as food banks across the country heard about it, they got excited and said, you know what, we could do that here. And that's what happened in Sioux City. We know um, when you compare the statistics in our district with the other districts across the state, we have a very high percentage of students that do participate in the free and reduced lunch program. And we don't correlate directly with that. It's not that if you're on that program you get a food sack because that's highly confidential information. Right, right. But we use that information to target the families that we know might have food needs. And so we looked at this, the school district and said this building, this building, this building, those percentages are astronomically high. 70 and 80 percent of the students in the four buildings we worked with this year are using that program. So we went into those four schools. We deliver sacks to those four schools every week, typically on Thursday, so that they can send the food sacks home with the students on Friday. There are about 10 items in a sack. And it varies every week, but some things are the same. There's always a fruit. There's a granola bar. There's a fruit snack. There's a box of cereal. There's a juice box. So we're trying to cover the essentials of the different food groups, the fruits and the grains and things like that. They have to be kid-friendly foods, things that the kids yeah. are going to enjoy. Mm -hmm. Manageable, so it isn't something that requires them to prepare a lot. The most sophisticated things we've done that way are microwave popcorn and instant oatmeal. Okay. And we have found the kids know how to handle that. And uh, who decides which, which individual child is going to take one of those sacks home? The different buildings have handled it differently. Um, the majority of the students are there by referral, and that's a staff referral. So it's an adult in the building. Could be a teacher, could be the lunch line ladies, could be people in the office, a principal who say, you know what, this child is a, a needy child, a chronically hungry child. And so every week a food coordinator in those buildings lets me know, okay, this week this is how many sacks we're going to need for the children we have on the program. And that might grow as more and more students are referred to the program. In your, on your website, I was really surprised at the area that you cover. Yes. Uh, would you like to uh, explain that? The food bank as a whole services 200 agencies in a 14 county area. So we go north almost all the way to the Minnesota border. We go east, we go up into um, South Dakota just a little bit, and then we go down into Nebraska as well. So we have agencies that come to us. We also have a truck that we were gifted with several years ago. I was going to ask you about that. And it has have refrigeration capability. So 12 months out of the year, we can load up that truck and go to Ida Grove. We go to Haywarden. We go to Rock Rapids. So if there's an agency in that area that doesn't have the ability to come get it for themselves, then we can take it to them. 
the price of gas nowadays, is that putting a little bit of a We bite? just recently had a conversation about the cost of gas and what we have to charge our agencies to do this and that we may need to look at it. In a way, we're blessed it's diesel because oh, diesel yes. is a little bit better than what you and I put in our car or pick up at the gas pump. But uh, so far, we've been able to hold the line and it would be my heart's desire to continue to do that. And uh, there is a little charge, uh, mm -hmm. uh, and I've known some people that have been surprised about that, but there is a little charge of so much a pound or That's or exactly ton. right, and we call it a shared maintenance fee, and it's based on weight. You're exactly right. It's a very small weight um, fee, and that just allows us to turn on the lights, to have the computer to inventory the product, to pay the staff, to do all the basic essentials. We are under the minimum that America's Second Harvest has established, maximum I should say, so that we aren't charging as much as we absolutely could because we find it's enough for us to keep the doors open and keep functioning. Um, it certainly allows the agencies to get their food for a whole lot less than it would cost them out in the market. Okay, and we're getting short on time, but okay. I, there are a couple other things I want to cover. What would an uh, agency that uh, wants to make use of your service and get food from your service, how do they qualify for that? What do they have to uh, show to sure. qualify for it? We are a small nonprofit organization with an established, it's called a 501c3. Any agency that wants to get food through the food bank needs to also be a nonprofit 501c3. There's an application form, it's on our website, or we can send it out to you. And you'd have to fill out the application, give us some information about what you'll do with the food, how you use it, and document that you are a nonprofit 501c3 agency. And, and your, your board of directors is, is, a, uh, is made up of volunteers, and I understand mm -hmm. some of them have been uh, with the organization almost from the beginning. One of the really uh, important groups of people that helped found the food bank when it began in 1991 was the labor movement. And so we have a couple of people that are part of that branch of our community and they've been awesome in their support. It's wonderful to have them. Okay. If they want to get a hold of you, mm -hmm. uh, uh, it's Linda Scheid. Mm -hmm. And what is your telephone number? 255-9741. Or you can hop online and send me an email and it's very easy because it's Linda at SiouxlandFoodBank.org. And that's at Floyd and 11th, is by the Correct. Cargill plant. Uh, exactly. Uh, the the, the Cargillor railroad tracks. Uh, I tell people when you turn off of Floyd Boulevard, before you get to Cargill and railroad tracks, you'll find me. All right. And we are out of time. I want to thank you for coming. Thank you for I, having me. I invite me. you back because you have a very interesting program. Maybe you can come back and show us what a backpack uh, uh, looks like. Or, I'd love to. That'd be great. Uh, take some pictures down there. Uh, this has been a, a program called Focus on Community. It's, uh, it's sponsored by uh, Siouxland Community Media, which is also a, a nonprofit organization, which makes it possible for us to, to do these programs, and also Morningside College, which uh, provides us with a studio here uh, to put the programs on. And I, I thank you again for being here. My pleasure.